to Outdoors with the Morgans. It is a beautiful day today here in Pennsylvania. The hot weather has kind of moved on out of here along with the humidity. It's only about 80 degrees today and it's absolutely perfect out. This morning I was over at Neighbor Cliffs with Concrete with the Hosses getting that next patio ready to go. My grade was off a little bit. Uh, we kind of moved and changed some things around, but we worked together, got everything ready to go. I think they're planning on pouring the rest of that, at least that other patio, on Monday. And then they may even get the sidewalk the day after. We'll have to see how it goes. But anyway, I am down here at the sawmill right now. I'll only be here for a few minutes. I've got a few red pine boards here. I'm trying to finish up that chicken coop. I got completely carried away on the chicken coop. Where do you see this thing? I don't want to show you until it's done and we're getting very very close but I need a few more trim boards and uh, we've been siding it with that red pine running it through the planer I'm gonna get some really nice stain for it but uh, it looks like a million bucks absolutely beautiful well, let me show you this wood here we'll get the trim cut up and uh, we'll go from there all right here's this uh, red pine here really nice stuff uh, I need to rip these down to like four inches I could do it up at the building, but it's easier on the sawmill. You can do all five at once. Now that is a one by four, a true one inch by four inch. So I started this video yesterday. We're kind of all over the place here. Doing a little saw milling, moving a little dirt. I just went over to uh, neighbor cliffs and picked up my plate compactor. I did a video the other day about uh, ethanol free gas. And for stuff like this, in my opinion, it's a must. Because like this plate compactor right here, I will... Uh, I'll put it away and I may not use it for six months who knows and if you have ethanol free gas in it it'll be totally fine it'll fire up on the first pull when I need it I'll give you a uh, sneak peek at the uh, chicken coop here even though it's not quite finished I need to put the roof on it I need to build a door yet I'm thinking I may do like a screen door for the summertime and then build a winter door as well but I had some leftover plywood from inside the building here that's what I made the nesting boxes out of and I had a sheet of plywood from a buddy of mine from a couple years ago it was in the garage that's why it's four by eight I had some framing lumber leftover store-bought from inside the building 
and then all the siding is red pine. I was going to do uh, board and batten, but I don't think I really need to. Before winter, I may insulate a little bit. But yeah, it's turning out really nice. Six nesting boxes. My little door there for the chickens to get in and out. One thing I learned on the last coop, I had a little lip down there at the bottom of the door. You don't want that, so when you're cleaning it out, you can go both ways. And I'm going to do the same over at that end as well. Have a nice big wide door going into it. And it's heavy. Very, very heavy. I used uh, nice heavy wire for the windows. And like I said, I'll put trim pieces around the windows, all the doors, all the corners. But uh, this red pine, Levi just ran this through the planer and uh, came out pretty nice. So I just picked up some stain uh, for the chicken coop. If you remember, when we stained this deck on this trailer, I used uh, Cabot Gold in Sunlit Walnut. And it came out really well. How long it's gonna last, I can't tell you that now. But I put, uh, actually Melissa put two coats on it. So I went with the same type of stain, but a uh, different color. I'll show you what I got. So this is what we're gonna use on the chicken coop, Cabot Gold, sun-drenched oak. A lot lighter than what we put on the uh, trailer over there. Hopefully we like it because this stuff is about $45 or $50 a gallon. So we're gonna try it out on a couple test pieces here, see how it looks. Right now I'm gonna shut the camera off and open this with a screwdriver, then turn the camera back on. That way I won't get a whole bunch of comments saying I should never use a screwdriver to open a paint can. I wonder if they call it Cabot Gold because of the price. Uh, it's starting to lighten up now, you can see. All right, we'll put uh, one coat on this, let it dry. Won't take long at all, then we'll put another coat on it. And we'll take it out in the sun, see what it looks like. I'm just going to use an old sock here. Uh-oh. I think it's going to be too light. We'll see what the second coat looks like, but uh, it almost looks like it's clear. Looks like you just put tongue oil on it or something. Not liking it. Not liking it. Should have went with something a little darker. This is a swing and a miss. I'll see what it looks like with the second coat, but I think this may have been a $50 error. I don't want anything real dark. I want to be able to see, you know, all the grain and the knots and all that in the wood, but this is just too light and it's making it too yellowish. I mean, I don't think the chickens are gonna care, but we're gonna look at it every day. Nope, nope, nope. So while we're letting this dry, we'll have kind of a uh, little State of the Union to answer some questions that uh, keep coming up. I did like a State of the Union video uh, a while back, and I think it's a good way to just answer a bunch of uh, reoccurring questions. But uh, one question keeps coming up, when are we going to finish the inside of the building? Uh, we have been actually making some progress in there. I'll tell you what kind of happened there. Uh, you know, we recently bought that property down in West Virginia, and someday I'll explain the whole story, but there were four uh, landowners, all family members, and uh, four different parcels. We bought three of them and they wanted to make sure the first parcel sold before they signed an agreement on the other three, which I don't know why, it's just something that they wanted to do. So I made an agreement, signed an agreement. It was my idea to say, hey, if that first one does not sell, we'll buy it as well 
and so I was kind of holding on to some money that was going to go inside the building just to make sure uh, that deal would go through if that makes sense so in other words if that first lot didn't close for some reason we were going to buy another 10 acres the three parcels we bought were all like 12 and a half or 13 and a half acres it comes up to right at about 40 acres so for the last couple months there once that all started i was kind of holding back a little bit because i have pretty much everything i need for inside the building i've got uh, i'll need a little bit more white pine uh but we've got the air conditioner the wood burners in all that kind of stuff so uh after the fourth of july you'll see a lot more activity uh going on inside the building we'll get that wrapped up but i think i have just about everything i need so that was kind of the story there i was just holding on to some money that was designated for the building to make sure i wasn't going to be able to buy another 10 acres of property in west virginia so not that you need to know all that but that's the story on that uh second question fourth july we are going to do our fireworks show it's going to be a scaled down party uh not as big as usual we'll probably have 150 maybe 200 people here and uh we'll be live streaming that on the channel the fireworks show on uh july 2nd right around dark you know eastern time so probably around 9 30 i'm guessing we'll start the live stream before that so put that on your calendar it'll be an incredible fireworks show july 2nd and uh, there's something else that keeps coming up Oh, the new sawmill. That's what uh, people keep asking about. We have a Wood Miser LT50 coming. Uh, it was supposed to be here. Well, it's supposed to be here first of September. That was the last I heard. It actually may get moved up a little bit. We'll see. And uh, sometime this summer, we'll have a building down there for the new sawmill down at the wood yard. We're just going to build a big pavilion. I'll probably have the same people. Matter of fact, I know I'll have the same people that built this building right here. Just put up a big pavilion down there concrete with the hosses will pour the floor and then i'll just probably side one two maybe three walls so i have to figure it out what i like to do is get the sawmill inside of it under roof and then kind of figure out the workflow and put a couple walls up where i want them and i'll use that uh white pine or red pine from down at the new property and speaking of the new property we're going to be uh putting the driveway in soon uh, someday this week I'm going to take probably just a BX down in a brush hog and kind of cut in just where the road's going to go. There's not a lot of brush, but I'll uh, mow down a little campsite up in there. Initially the plan was to try to get way back into the center of the property, but uh, we don't need to do that. I don't really want to do that now after we looked at it. You can get up off the road a couple hundred feet, like a hundred yards maybe, and you can't see anything, you can't hear anything, even in the winter time with all those pines uh it's back in there pretty far and i just want to leave that center of the property alone and people are asking if we're going to log it and take a bunch of trees out we're not going to do that but i mean you could take hundreds of trees out there and you wouldn't even know the difference they probably need thinned actually so uh we'll have plenty of white pine and red pine for whatever we want to do that's for sure there's tons of it down there so what i'd like to do is get to a point where you know you got a road up in there have a campsite and uh, we'll probably start off with a big tent then maybe a trailer who knows or maybe go straight to a cabin but that's the long-term goal is to have a cabin there and a nice place to go on the weekends or, or whenever we want it's in a beautiful area down there it's going to be more of a uh, summer destination i guess you could say uh, winter time i won't mind it'd be nice to get down in the middle of winter but they do get an incredible amount of snow down there uh, i saw two different things I looked online, it said 175 inches, that was from like weather.com is their annual snowfall down there, and another one was like 140 inches. Regardless, that's a lot of snow, because I think Erie, Pennsylvania is right around 100 inches, but I'm kind of looking forward to it actually. Uh, it'd be nice to get down there for a week in the, in the winter in a little cabin or something, that'd be pretty nice. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other updates we need to talk about right now. Oh, the other thing I wanted to talk about, I did two videos recently, well, one last month on uh, oil prices, kind of supply and demand with my limited knowledge from working in oil and gas, but I do do a lot of reading and things, and I talked about how we got to this point, and then I did another video about corporate greed and record profits, because that's all we hear about in the news. You can go back and watch that video. That was just the other day. And the only reason I did that one, there were so many comments blaming 
record profits and corporate greed. But anyway, that's not why I'm telling you this. I got a few comments, not many from people, telling me that I should just stick to my normal videos and, and don't do things like that. And I get that. People get used to a certain thing and, and they like that. But the fact of the matter is, you have to step outside your, I don't know, your comfort zone or you got to mix things up once in a while if you're going to continue to uh, like grow a channel. You can't keep doing the same thing every day. We'll always be cutting wood. We'll always be building stuff and doing things. But occasionally I will throw in videos like that and it's beneficial to the channel because it brings more people in. What happens is over time, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again with just different variations, you kind of get put off in a little corner of YouTube somewhere and you stop growing. That's what happens. And it's a great community and, and it's a great place to be because we get a lot of views for the number of subscribers that we have. Uh, you know, I see channels with, you know, eight, nine hundred thousand subscribers but they don't get very many views. So we've got a, a nice community here. Uh, it, it's all been good, but occasionally you just gotta mix it up a little bit. And I try to title my videos appropriately. So if it's something you're not interested in, you don't have to watch it. But in the last week, I think we gained like 5,000 subscribers. And so what those different types of videos do, they bring those people in, they start seeing some of your other videos and you know maybe they like those as well then they stick around not all of them will but some will so that's why i kind of mix things up once in a while and speaking of mixing things up this was a huge mix up this isn't going to work but don't worry i'll use this stain for something sometime I'm not that guy to return a gallon of paint or a gallon of stain because I screwed up. I never liked that, so I know people do that. I was at Costco one time. Couldn't believe this. you got to hear this story. I was at Costco, and I bought a router, modem, combo, something like that. I don't know what it was, but whatever it was, it was the wrong one. And it was like 250 bucks. It was a top-of-the-line one because we need as fast of Internet as we can uh, because we upload videos all the time. So anyway, I buy this thing. I come home. I can't get things to work right. I'm talking to our internet provider on the phone and all that stuff. I think I bought like a router modem combo and all I needed was a router. So I'm like, I'm going to take this thing back to Costco. So I take it back and it was opened. It was out of the box. And I said, hey, this is my screw up. I got the wrong one. And they said, oh, no problem at all. And as soon as they said that, somebody else came up and they uh, said, hey, can you put this back on the shelf or whatever? And he's like, is it open? And the guy's like, yeah. He goes, yeah, we can't put it on the shelf. We'll have to send it back. And I felt bad. I said, you know what? It's my screw up. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll sell it to somebody that needs it or something. He said, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. And this guy goes on to tell me some of the stuff people return out there. I could never work there. I'd tell him to go fly a kite. He said people will buy like a snowblower in the fall and return it in the spring and buy summer products and return it in the fall. I, I just can't believe people would do that. That's why one of the many reasons things cost so much. He even told me that uh, people have returned the piece of cardboard, cardboard with the foil on it that a cake came on and said they didn't like the cake and they gave them their money back. It's crazy. Well, there you have it. Definitely a uh, swing and a miss. Let's take it out in the sun, but uh, I don't think it's going to matter much. I mean, it looks nice, but it's just not what we're after. I'm going to go with something a little bit darker. So I think what we're going to do is use a real dark color for the uh, trim around the windows, the doors, the corners, all that stuff, like a real dark brown. So I want the siding to be just a little bit darker than what I have here. I may be getting a little carried away. I mean, it's just a chicken coop, but we're going to be looking at it every day. It's really well built. It's going to last a long time, so I want it to look nice. So that's the deal with that. But anyway, I think that's about it for today's video. I hope I answered some of your questions, and I appreciate you all being here, and I will catch you on the next one.